Forest Hill United Methodist Church, all are welcome here, and I am glad that you have decided to worship with us this day. Just a couple quick announcements. Remember our regular fellowship times that we have every week. Uh, we always have a very interesting Sunday school class at 945, and you'll see the space on the website where you can click into that link. And you can use that same link if you would like a social time of gathering and just uh, talking with folks, not like a regular class, but just a time of fellowship and connecting because it can get lonely in these uh, very coronavirus times when we're staying inside. So feel free to, to click that same Sunday School link uh, Thursdays at 3 to be a part of that. And also know that we will be doing our outdoor communion service on February 7th at 3 p.m. And I know that's Super Bowl Sunday, but it is considerably before the game. So you should be able to come and, and, and have the Lord's Supper before you can have a nice supper and, and watch the game. So everyone is invited to be a part of that. Now I invite you to open your hearts and your minds that you might be transformed by the living God this day. and celebrations and I again will celebrate uh, music at this church so thank you for that hymn I love that hymn so beautiful and um, just happy that we have blessed with the talent we do here uh, please remember in your prayers continue to pray for our country for healing for coming together for peace and um, as folks are are online and sharing on Facebook Try to remember if uh, how you felt last, like four years ago, and try to have some compassion for a person that might be feeling differently and practice our Christian love that way. Um, also, remember all those uh, who are suffering COVID, those who have passed it's over 400,000 now, which is, is it's crazy how quickly the last hundred thousand came about it is it is difficult time so many people are mourning so many people are afraid for folks who are sick um, so many health care workers are stressed and strained to the max so please continue to pray for them pray for for plat for schools that are struggling to to manage in this time and uh, just just pray for us all to get through this and move forward to the time that there will be enough vaccine for everyone. Continue to pray 
for Chuck that the chemo works to shrink those tumors and for Carol, uh, continue to pray for Pierre as he heals and, and Phyllis. Continue to pray for those who are our, our shut-ins with for Ruth and Patricia and Frida and for her for the her for that cyst to shrink as you pray for her and for Jean, for Barbara and Luke and Cheyenne. Uh, for healing and please play, pray for Rebecca and uh, for her family issues. Let us be in an attitude of prayer. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for the beauty of the world that is around us. We give you thanks for the ability you give us to move Forward, even when times are hard. Lord, we ask your blessing upon our country for the hard journey that is before us as a country, for attacking the financial devastation and the human loss caused uh, by this pandemic, that we might find a way to heal and, and reconcile over racial injustices, that we might move forward in a more just way, and that we might heal as a people, that we might find ways of peace and love and caring for those with whom we disagree. Lord, we hold up for your healing and your care. Chuck, Carol, Pierre, Phyllis, Ruth, Patricia, Frida, Jean, Barbara, Luke, Cheyenne, Rebecca and her family. And for all those concerns that I did not mention aloud, Lord, you know the hurts and the pains of our hearts. We lift them to you in the trust that you hear and care. And we ask all this in your son's name who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
I am going off lectionary for another week, but sort of not, because Jonah, not in its completeness, but Jonah shows up in the lectionary this week, and so I'm actually going back to, to last week. I felt rather led to deal with our story of Samuel that came from last week's Hebrew Bible uh, lectionary reading. And to let you know, just because it's hard to keep straight all the, the storyline, unless you are a, uh, a very good biblical scholar, we were in the Minor Prophets, which are the small books that are at the very end of the Old Testament. And this time we are going to 1 Samuel, which is in what we consider the historical books. So this is the, for, from a history standpoint, comes in the place where uh, folks have come up out of Egypt and they formed a confederacy, sort of a loosely organized group of tribes, and a leader was raised up whenever it was needed, but people wanted a king and called out for a king. And Samuel was the leader of the religious, for the, the, the head priest at the time, and he was the one that warned them against the thing they wanted and then finally gave it to him. So Samuel is our in the middle uh, character here of moving from the, this confederacy to a united kingdom for the Israelites and the Judeans. So in this part, uh, this we're in the first part of the story. So Samuel is a child that was born of Hannah who was barren and couldn't have any children and she came and prayed and Eli was the priest there and he was going to dismiss her and then found out how earnest she was in her prayer and simply said they'd let God do whatever and she conceived and had a child and and finally having the thing she wanted the most she had promised this child back to God and she followed through and gave Samuel back to Eli, to be raised in service of the Lord, to be raised as a priest. She didn't stop loving him. She cared for him. She came to him every year and brought him new clothes. And he, from a young child, was raised by Eli. Eli already had grown children, which he had not done a very good job with. They were they were scoundrels and they abused their power and Eli had not checked them in that. And uh, he does a better job with, with Samuel. I think it's maybe easier to start parenting at grandparenting age. At least I hope so, because that's when I had my kid. Maybe he has a little more wisdom at this point because Samuel turns out well, uh, but but Eli, he has his mother loving him too. But, uh, but Eli is uh, the character which this most this is a story with Eli and Samuel in it. So from the third chapter of First Samuel, hear now the word. Now the boy Samuel was serving the Lord under Eli. The Lord's word was rare at that time, and visions weren't widely known. One day, Eli, whose eyes had grown so weak he was unable to see, was lying down in his room. God's lamp hadn't gone out yet, and Samuel was lying down in the Lord's temple where God's chest was, and that is the Ark of the Covenant, um, where the Ten Commandments resided, and where it was understood God lived. The Lord called to Samuel. I am here, he said. Samuel heard, 
hurried to Eli and said, I'm here, you called me? I didn't call you, Eli replied. Go lie down. So he did. Again, the Lord called to Samuel. So Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, I'm here, you called me? I didn't call you my son, Eli replied. Go and lie down. Now Samuel didn't yet know the Lord and the Lord's word hadn't yet been revealed to him. A third time the Lord called Samuel. He got up and went to Eli and said, I'm here, you called me. Then Eli realized that it was the Lord who was calling the boy. So Eli said to Samuel, go and lie down. If he calls you again, say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down where he had been. Then the Lord came and stood there calling just as before, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel said, speak, your servant is listening. The Lord said to Samuel, I am about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of all who hear it tingle. On that day, I will bring to pass against Eli everything I said about his household, every last bit of it. I told him that I would punish his family forever because of the wrongdoing he knew about, how his sons were cursing God because of that I swore about Eli's household that his family's wrongdoing will never be reconciled by sacrifice or by offering. Samuel lay there until morning and then opened the doors of the Lord's house. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli. But Eli called Samuel saying, Samuel, my son, I'm here, Samuel said. What did he say to you? Eli asked. Don't hide anything from me. May God deal harshly with you, and worse still, if you hide from me a single word from everything he has said to you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. He, he is the Lord, Eli said. He will do as he pleases. So Samuel grew up, and the Lord was with him, not allowing any of his words to fail. All Israel from Dan to Beersheba knew that Samuel was trustworthy as the Lord's prophet. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable unto you, our rock, and our Redeemer. Amen. This story is one that is somewhat familiar as far as stories from Samuel. If you know a story from Samuel, it is probably this one. It is often used in vacation Bible stories, Bible school stories, or in Sunday school. So if you grew up in the church, you might have heard it. However, it probably stopped at a different point. In fact, the lectionary allowed it to stop at a different point. We could have stopped with just saying that Samuel said, speak, your servant is listening. And honestly, it's a much nicer place to stop the reading. In Sunday school, you probably would have stopped there and then had a nice craft to do. And then it's a much sweeter story and as I read the lectionary reading, I felt kind of tempted to want to stop there too. But I usually don't allow myself that and want to wrestle with the challenging part of the text because the message that Samuel gets is not one that is sweet and nice. It is hard news to swallow. Now, Eli had had prior warnings. It mentioned that God had said, as you were told before. So right before this scene, Eli had prior warning that God was displeased with the way that his sons had been abusing their post as priests and had let him know that. And maybe he didn't want to believe it then, and God needed another way to get the message across. So he spoke to Samuel. 
How are you when you have bad news for someone? I think most of us are probably a bit more like Samuel. I don't really want to tell somebody. Or if you have bad news coming your way, you might be a little much, a little bit more to drag your feet and not want to hear, but this was not Eli. Eli felt he needed to know what the message was. Because God had spoken to Samuel. And for whatever mistakes that Eli made as a parent, he did love the Lord. He was faithful. So he says, tell me everything. It might sound kind of harsh the way he tells them, be sure and tell me everything or else. But he was very anxious to know. And Samuel told him, it's not pretty. Your family will come to an end. Now, we already see that he considered Samuel as a son, and that part of his family did not come to an end. But as far as his own bloodline, it did in the ensuing war. And how did Eli respond to this? How would you respond? I can imagine I would be pretty upset and not wanting to believe it and find some way to bargain about it. But Eli gives what I actually think is the most faithful response in all of scriptures. It is the Lord. He will do as he pleases. It is God's doing. I will not fight it. To me, it is like Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane choosing to drink the cup. And maybe some people would be very upset at that comparison I would give. But I feel for Eli. Maybe when I read this scripture as a younger person, I always associated much more closely with Samuel. But being now more like Eli's age, I guess I feel more sympathy for him. I have made missteps in my life, as we all have. And I hope whatever challenges and, and pains that came from those missteps, that maybe I can be like Eli and accept them. It is the Lord. The Lord will do as he pleases. So the story goes on that these things do come about and that Samuel continues to be one who grows in faith. Now, I would say Samuel's tenure is not completely blameless. I don't think it was really fair how he treated Saul. That's another sermon, but, but he was a good and faithful leader in many ways. I think Eli had some good and faithfulness in him too. But Samuel is are the hero of our book. So why does this speak to me today? How does this speak to us today? Well, I think we are in a time where we need to be particularly open to hearing what God has to say. As I have been saying for some time in this time of transition in the world, this time of transition in our country, it is an important time for us to be open to hearing. And in this church, we have decided to embark upon a process of visioning and trying to see what is God's vision for us of all the good things we can do. What is the God things that we should be about, that God is calling us to? That we might be like Samuel and say, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Give us the direction that we need. I also think this is a text that speaks to us as to where we are as a country right now. There are hard times before us. 
Now, some of those challenges came about simply by, by chance, I mean, I guess we knew at some point a disease could come up and do this to us, and we could have been more prepared, but we didn't cause that. But some of the pains that we deal with now, we've laid some groundwork for. We were built as a nation on racism, making our money off the slave labors of those with dark skin. That is just the historical truth of it. And we live into the richness of our country now on the backs of that history. That history that has continued far after uh, slavery was over, the devaluing of those who are black and brown and we who are white have profited over that in some way or another, maybe some more directly than others. It is a painful history, and one that we really don't want to hear. This summer, as we looked at the racial riots and, and unrest and things that were happening and looked as a church and spoke about really opening our eyes to seeing what injustices this uh, racial conflict, this racial disparity has caused. There were some I heard who said, I didn't know it was still like this. And maybe after seeing the scenes from the sixth and the white supremacist and the Nazi symbols, maybe we also had another pang of, I didn't, didn't want to think it was like this. Even in uh, now President Biden's remarks on that, that day saying this is, this is not the country, even though obviously it is. It's hard to look unflinchingly at that judgment of what has happened is feeding into what is happening in the struggles and strife of our world. The high point for me on the inaugurational, uh, uh, inauguration ceremony, uh, it, it was not Lady Gaga, she did great, or Jennifer Lopez, but rather it was this young poet, as it was for many, I know. And I'm not going to try to say all of her poem, but there is a line which makes me think of this text. She says, it's because being American is more than a pride we inherit. It's a past we step into and how we repair it. It is time for us to look unflinchingly at this past we inherit and how will we step in to repair it. And this is a, a question that is larger than any one of us and somewhat hard then for us to wrap our minds around, but I think this is a time that we open ourselves to see and to hear things anew. Even when it is painful, if Eli can look so unflinchingly to the pain which was before him, maybe we can take some courage from that. To look honestly to what has been and look with hope and inspiration to what can be. Because this poem is not one that ends and, and challenge, it ends and the soaring hope that if we are brave, that the light, we can be it. We can be that light in the world. So as a people, as a church, I invite us to be waiting and listening how God is speaking to us now.
Now we can't all be uh, like Samuel and hear so clearly our name called in the middle of the night to where we actually thought it was somebody in another room speaking to us. Some people have that kind of call without a doubt, but most of us don't. For most, it is when we hear or see something and it gets under our skin and starts working. And it makes us think and ache and want to do something different, even when we are afraid that maybe we're not being called anything special. Or maybe this is just too hard for us to look at. But I believe that is where we have to be right now to walk through this time faithfully. So I invite you to pray the prayer as you, as you pray and as you ask and talk to God to end it with that you are his servant listening. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening and open ourselves to give space to hear. And maybe we hear in a time of prayer and an image or a feeling or a word, or maybe it opens us to the rest of the day that we have eyes and ears to see the way that God is calling us. Because I want us to come to a church, at, to come together as a church and figure out how do we work to heal the wounds, the parts that we can do something with. And in your personal life, how can you work to heal wounds? How can you reach out and show care and show respect to others, even if their stances are not ones that you respect? They are people, and it is our calling to respect that. Be beacons of light. Be places where we listen. Be calling to God for the help and the direction that we need at this time because as unlikely as it may seem, you are being called to a time such as this. You have something to offer to this world. You have ways to be servants. Not that we will do it perfectly, but that we are called to walk bravely in the purpose of doing it. That is evident. Be faithful people, be faithful in searching out the word, be faithful and be willing to listen to it. Live as those who are listening to the word. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, open our hearts to you. Open us to your message. Open us to hear. Open us that we might be brave enough to, to trust that you are calling us. Lord, we come to you with all the heaviness that we are carrying, the, the challenge of this time, this this weight of, of the times we have not lived into your great calling. And Lord, we lift them to you so that you can wash that away and leave us open and ready to hear the call you have for us. So in silence, we lift that to you that we might be free to listen. As you pray, as you breathe in, 
feel God's grace as a light. Let it be in you. Let it open you. Let God's grace surround you that you know there is, there is nothing in your past that can't be healed. And Lord, we are your servants. Speak to us the words you would have us live into. We wish to be your faithful servants. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven and made new. Thanks be. peace and grace. Carry within you the light of Christ. Go forth to be the light to a world that is in need. Be lights of grace, of kindness, of compassion, of hope. Go in peace and power. <laughs>